What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the Asset Studio and Affine Designer on the iPad? Well, that is what we are here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen, I'm a media design educator, and today we're here to talk all about the Asset Studio. We've been doing this series going through every studio that's found in Affinity Designer on the iPad, so if you haven't checked that out, make sure that you check out this playlist so that you can get all the videos. Now, to be perfectly honest, the Asset Studio is not one that I use a lot in my workflow, but it can be really useful if there's something that you use over and over and over again throughout different projects. So let's go ahead, let's dive in and take a look at the Asset Studio. All right, so here we are back in Affinity Designer on the iPad. So let's go over to the Asset Studio. Its icon looks like a three by three grid of squares. And it's gonna be right below the appearance panel, which we talked about last time. So let's open that up. You can see it says assets at the top. And by default, Affinity comes with this iOS 12 setup. And you can kind of see that this Assets Studio was probably aimed at UI designers. And so they've just built in a lot of things. So if you're doing UI design for an app, then you're just going to be able to drag these things onto it. So let's say that we wanted one of these on off switches here. We just scroll down and we'd find it. And we're just going to go ahead and click on that and drag it out onto our artboard. And then it's a vector shape so we can resize it accordingly. This is not like a symbol though. We will talk about symbols later. We're going to get to that studio and a couple of studios, but it's not connected to anything. So you can't actually edit the asset and then have it update. The asset's just like a pre-made thing that you can pop out and then you can change accordingly. So to see what this is, we can go to our layers panel, which of course we talked about a while ago. And you can see we've just got a group and this group is just a rounded rectangle and an ellipse with an effect on it. Okay, a little drop shadow. And so of course we could alter that if we want to say we want this to be red, we come here, we can make it red. So pretty easy. That does not affect what happens in the assets studio. So this is the iOS 12 group, just because iOS 12 was the one that Affinity gave everybody, but you can find UI kits online. That's a really common thing for UI designers to use. And like I said, I don't do a lot of UI design, so it's not something that I use a lot, but a lot of people do find this to be really helpful for the work that they do. So right now I only have this iOS 12 group of assets here, but I can make my own group of assets. So let's go ahead and let's select up here in the menu and say add category. And you can see there's also import category. So if you do find a UI kit online that you like, you can import that category into here. So let's go ahead and choose add category. And now I have an unnamed category right here. And then from here, we can add a subcategory to our category. So let's add a subcategory of assets. So we'll just go ahead and select our play button, hit the little menu and say add asset from selection. And you can see what's happened here. It's actually added each thing separately right? And that is not what we wanted. So we need to do something different to actually get our asset to add. And if you remember, this little switch button here was a group. So let's go ahead and make that a group first. So we'll just go ahead and select it again, select over all of it. And once you have it selected, just go up to the edit menu and you're just going to choose group. Once you have that group there, then we can come back here and we can say add asset from selection. And then we get our asset there. And if we want to add this one in again, Tap it and drag it out here. And then we have our asset there. And we can do that with each of these. So we need to select them, group them, and then add asset from selection. Now, of course, another thing that we might wanna do is name this. So let's go ahead and choose rename category. And we'll just call these media icons. Click OK. Now we have this group called media icons. We can do the same thing with the subcategory. We can rename it. If the orange was going to be our active icon, we'll just call them active. Click OK, and then that changes. Okay, and then the last thing to know about this asset studio here is just how to delete something. So we don't need this circle and this triangle. So if we just tap on it, we get the insert or delete options. And normally to insert, I'll just drag it out, but let's go ahead and delete this. It says, are you sure? And we say, yes. Here, we'll delete this one and say yes. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You can see that you have the option to delete a subcategory as well. And you also have the options to delete a category or sort categories or export a category so that you can then take it into another affinity program. So that's pretty much all there is to the assets panel. Again, this isn't a very complicated one and it's not one that I use very much, 
But if you are working in something like UX or UI design where you are repeating elements over and over and over again, this could be a really good studio for you in order to save you some time and effort. All right, thanks for coming along with me and looking at the Asset Studio. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure that you give it a like. And if you like videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. Also, remember to drop in the comments. Let me know what types of videos you'd like to see. And don't forget, I've got lots of courses that you can take as well to help you get better at a fan designer. So check out those links in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on the next video.